Meet the Farmer TV is made possible by the generous support of Planet Earth Diversified, Makia Video Productions, and Frank Melly Productions, with additional support from Flavor Magazine, serving the Piedmont's local food and wine culture. Hello, welcome to Meet the Farmer TV, food from farm to the plate. I'm Michael Clark, a local farmer, engineer, and proponent of alternative agriculture here in Central Virginia. We're here to launch a new series, Meet the Farmer TV, food from farm to the plate. Slow food, local food, community food systems. In this time of economic crisis, we will show you how to benefit as well as support local community food systems. Now let's start with our first episode, an introduction to this compelling concept and its huge impact on our local culture, community, and economy. What's so interesting uh, about what's happening in the country these days with local agriculture is that you have the meltdown of the housing market where, where people are, are wondering where should I live, and where, 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 where can I afford to live. You have gas prices going through the roof, people can't afford to drive. You have this health issues with, with food that people are eating. And more and more, local agriculture becomes the answer to all of these problems. I don't have to drive as far to get food. I, 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 and I, can, I can have some certainty that it's safe to eat. So local agriculture is really benefiting from, uh, instead of having to, uh, to swim against the wave, to really ride the wave these days. Buying fresh and local is so important to me on so many levels. On a global level, it's important because it helps to curb global warming. If every American ate one meal a week, just one meal of locally produced food, it can be breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it would save 1.1 million barrels of oil a week. That's not um, gallons of oil, that's barrels of oil. And this is um, from government statistics. The other thing going from the global level to the community level, buying fresh and local would also help our local economy. It would help um, our local farmers in our area to be able to exist, to be able to continue to survive in this economy that's dominated by agribusiness, industrial agriculture, that's also subsidized by our taxes uh, through federal farm bill. Large corporation farms are being funded, whereas the small farmers don't see a penny of that. That's why the prices are higher, and it's so hard for them to even survive. Through buying uh, fresh and local, we can hopefully, as a country change that. The other reason that I really think that buying fresh and local is important is on a personal level. The food that you buy, that, that we buy, that's grown within a hundred miles, it may have been picked yesterday or that morning before you buy it. All the vitamins that are in that food, all of the enzymes that are in that food are still intact. We're getting living, healthy, food to keep our bodies healthy, to keep our immune system healthy. Whereas the trucks transporting the food from agribusiness farms can be five, maybe even eight days old. Food that you buy that's grown here locally is fresh, it's picked when it's ripe, and it still has all of its life-giving vitamins, minerals, and enzymes. Some places like where I'm lucky enough to be working right now, the Jefferson Area Board for the Aging has just begun a Buy Fresh, Buy Local program and is serving this to our clients there um, to keep their immune systems high, give them a lot more energy and support, our, be an active, supportive uh, part of our community. So we can see uh, when it's really warm and hot, sometimes you'll get a little bit of yellowing on the basil leaves. That's a high starch content uh, from the high heat. And that will cause basil to blacken when it gets in the refrigerator or the cooler uh, less than 45, 50 degrees. 
So what we do in the greenhouse here is we grow these really tender, uh, nice, bright green basil leaves. And we achieve that by uh, evaporative cooling in the greenhouse and protecting the, the uh, plants from high levels of ultraviolet and ozone uh, through the filtered air in the greenhouse and the filtering of the plastic of the greenhouse also. So you can see here now we're going to cut these nice beautiful tops. We'll pack them in these, in these boxes. There's a little pad in the bottom to keep it from getting too wet. And then we'll take this to Tolliver House and uh, he'll be using that on his uh, uh, menu for our fundraiser for Buy Fresh, Buy Local. And we're going to be uh, providing some new potatoes for the dinner tonight. So we're going to dig a few fingerlings here. Pull these up. You can see them coming up out of the ground. These are fresh new potatoes. The new potatoes have a thinner skin because we haven't allowed the plants to dry and set the skin. Commercial potatoes are often killed with an herbicide to force the plants to dry and then that sucks all the moisture out of the skin and makes them real hard and good for storage. But what we want tonight is these very tender thin skin potatoes and we've left the plants green. They're just beginning to flower so we get the most tender. So you get a, a, a fairly smaller amount of potatoes because the, the plants haven't fully developed but you get those real nice flavor very tender the skin almost just rubs right off in fact we have to be careful as we dig them we don't damage them so we'll take these up now and wash them get them ready for dinner the health economy and environment are very interrelated we need to recognize that fact as when you talk about the local food Local food is a healthy food, and if we eat better, we live better. We all want to live better. And it's important that we think of food in a context which is beneficial to our, ourselves as well as our community and our country. As you may or may not realize, that uh, food travels about 1,500 miles to get to your table. And that is a lot of distance to travel for your food. It has impact on the environment. It has impact on energy in terms of use of petrol. It also has impact on the climate because of pollution which it causes. Transportation causes about 62% of the CO2 pollution. And I think we need to realize that when we eat local food, we are also protecting the environment for ourselves and our fellow human beings. Local food provides jo local jobs. It, the money circulates within this economy so that you are using again and again the resources we have instead of sending it out to somewhere else. You know, there are many ways to improve distribution of healthy, healthy food and local food. We have a local market, farmer's market, which meets every, every week in downtown Charlottesville, which sells you fresh food. You can, you can smell as well as taste the freshness of the food. And it is, when you eat fresh food, it is good for your health. Well, what I want to encourage people is to not only to uh, talk about local food, but also do actually producing themselves. When I was, my children were small, I produced vegetables in my own gardens, so that you can, they can see how, where the food comes from. Instead of getting food from grocery store, they know where the earth comes from earth. As somebody said, uh, the beans don't come from the can, they come from the plant. And so that is important to realize and remember and teach children the importance of fresh food and green food, vegetables. Another point I wanted to make that we can have edible landscapes. For example, uh, in my home we have nasturtiums which are used in salad. And so you can have a landscape of many kinds. You can have flowers but they can also be edible. So you don't waste flowers. And in terms of it is enjoy the beauty as well as the food nutrition value of the plants. So you can have edible landscapes which are healthy in the community. It started out, it, it, it was a bill of necessity, really, because uh, in 1993, they passed this law that stated that uh, a food, in, food establishment had to be inspected. And since 1993, it's, it's gradually been broadened to include the home. And when that happened, anyone who was selling at a farmer's market, uh, baked goods, breads, candies, anything like that, they couldn't sell it unless they, unless they had their home inspected. People 
just quit. They said, well, I don't need this. You know, I make a couple hundred bucks maybe on the weekend. And the question actually went to court whether a home was a food manufacturing plant. And darn if the Supreme Court of Virginia didn't rule that it was. So after, I guess it was, well, 1993, they didn't really start enforcing it to 97. So after about 10 years and having been to court and so on, the situation was so intolerable that uh, we approached Senator Cree Deeds and asked him to please sponsor the bill for us. So we put it in and it started out as any farm produced food products. And it got reduced to baked goods, candies, jams and jellies. And they wouldn't let us have pickles. So that's what we ended up with. But we figure that's a step in the right direction. We're particularly happy with the labeling because it says not for resale, uh, processed and prepared without state inspection. And uh, you can only sell the person's going to eat it, obviously the not for resale. And this promotes accountability. It promotes the local and uh, the fact that you're buying from someone you know as opposed to all of the agribusiness. And it also, um, you have this problem with the tomatoes now and they still don't know what causes the salmonella, where it came from and so on. If you did have salmonella on the tomato, you know, right where it came from, you can go to that guy and say, hey, you know, I got sick, I've had the tomato test with salmonella on it, you know. And besides, the chances of it are so remote. They really are. It's just not a history of someone going to a farmer's market and buying a tomato or buying a candy or a jam or jelly or a baked good and having any problem. And so this is so much, it's so much going to help the buy local people. Now the law is effective July 1st and we're just dying to, to see people start to come out of the woodwork again and have their labels on it. And, and the, we really hope it's going to work. We hope down the road we can have pickles <laughs> and maybe other items as, as uh, we find out that there's no problem. In the end, the bill passed unanimously both houses. So we're going to wait and see how it opens up things, but certainly we finally got a niche in there um, that we can have something that says there's a difference between buying food from your next door neighbor with respect to regulation and buying food at the supermarket. And that's, this bill cuts to the heart of that, I think, and that's why we're so excited about it, mainly because of the, what that label says, not for resale. It's not a resale thing. And that ties in to the local, buying locally, and promoting the local that here is a niche because there comes a point when you have so much regulation and they apply it to everybody. Across the board, you have so much regulation it actually makes it more unhealthy because you're stopping the little people who really know how to produce the good food and you're stopping the people from buying it from them. Uh, you can get more information, uh, particularly we have a Virginia Independent Consumers and Farmers Association, which is a lobbying group that really worked hard on this bill and is for uh, local and buying directly farmer to consumer. And the information on their website is uh, at vicfa.net, V-I-C-F-A.net. And more and more of these grassroots organizations are, are, are growing up, which is really good. And actually we have um, some organizations nationally, I think there are uh, a number of states now that have what they call NICFA, which is the Independent Consumers and Farmers Association uh, National. Um, I forget exactly how many states, but there's a, I think it's about a third of them now that we're getting other chapters, so maybe in the end we'll be able to get something if enough people band together and, and work towards this. So that's one of the reasons we're so happy that it did get through, although we still want those pickles on there. <laughs> I made a little experiment, went by the grocery store um, this morning and bought just a few random uh, items, and these are, these are, this is produce that is not local, so I have a I have a tomato from, from Mexico, I have a bell pepper from, from Canada, and I have uh, an apple from, from New Zealand. And there's nothing particularly special about any of these items, but the total cost was more than $6, and that's pretty striking. So we have a tomato that's um, a couple of dollars, uh, which tells you something. Uh, it's a signal first that, uh, that if you are looking for inexpensive food, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to find it uh, by buying something that's traveled uh, hundreds of miles. Actually, you may find that the cheaper food um, is something grown locally. We all have a duty, a responsibility to think about the stewardship of, of the landscape, the land, and land that supports us. And really we ought to be thinking about local food as a kind of partnership 
between those of us. I'm a consumer. I need this tomato, um, but I want to be a partner in 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 its responsible uh, production, growing and transporting that 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 food. Local food, committing to local food, is really at the heart of it, about a, a new kind of way of thinking about citizenship. Uh, we've got to begin to understand that our, our, uh, our responsibilities, our duties as, as citizens extend uh, to the things that we buy, uh, the ways that we use uh, our, our dollars, uh, the, the, uh, the way we, we um, uh, buy or don't buy something that, that will support or not our, our community and the farmers and, and other fellow citizens, uh, fellow members of this community that we share. Increasingly, um, those of us who teach in, in urban planning and architecture understand that food, food production, local food production, is an important part uh, of what we've got to think about in terms of what a community needs, in terms of its infrastructure. And so, in addition to the sort of conventional forms of infrastructure that we think of, uh, streets and sewer systems and lighting and all those sort of things that cities need, we also need to be thinking about food. Um, there is a, an interest in expanding this infrastructure to green things generally, the kind of services provided by the, the trees and, and uh, watersheds and so on. But food is, is, a, is another way of thinking about community infrastructure. And we need that infrastructure. And supporting local food is about uh, sending dollars, uh, supporting the, the economics of local food production, ensuring that that, that local uh, food production infrastructure will, will still be around. Tonight is the Piedmont Environmental Council's and the Buy Fresh Buy Local Campaign's first annual Meet Your Farmer Dinner at the Tolliver House here in Gordonsville, Virginia. The goal of the evening is for consumers to have the opportunity to connect and get to know their local farmers, um, even in a greater extent than at a farmer's market or purchasing their products in a local, in a local grocery store or market. We are encouraging people to buy local foods in all all types of different marketplaces. This is part of the Buy Fresh, Buy Local program, which was launched by uh, Piedmont Environmental Council in 2007 with the goal of connecting consumers with locally grown foods and strengthening our rural economy. We'd like to commend our chef for the evening, Jonathan Hayward, who has been committed to using local ingredients long before many other people jumped on the bandwagon. We're very excited about trying his various dishes this evening with our high quality, delicious just locally grown foods and I'll be back with you at the end of the evening. You know so something like this at the Tolliver House with uh, Melissa you know gives us a chance to to showcase the the local products and I think if we you know give it to one person who, who comes to the winery or goes to the farm and buys locally from now on in you know it can be nothing but a positive for the farmers and the winemakers uh, around the area. As far as uh, benefits to the local community is, is showing people where they can get this sort of stuff. Um, a lot of people have heard about buying local and buying fresh, but don't really know where the local farms are or who the local farmers are. And Buy Fresh, Buy Local has a nice listing by category, whether you're a vineyard, whether you're a store, whether you're a restaurant, whether you're a farmer, uh, whether you have a CSA, which is Community Supported Agriculture, where um, communities buy uh, membership to a farm and can go there once a week and pick up stuff. This gives people the um, opportunity to get involved in the things that they've heard about but aren't sure where to find it. Uh, we'd like to talk to you a little bit about the difference between just buying an organic label at your uh, major grocery store or health food chain and buying local and using local products from local farmers that you know and meet and maybe they found a better way, a, a way that, that works better for that locality, that, that is not necessarily certifiably organic, but might be the best possible practice to get you the best food locally. There are a number of things that we did for years and years uh, that were certified organic. We, we contributed to the uh, Virginia Organic Law, we contributed to the USDA federal law, and we helped write the manual for uh, Virginia Organic Farming Program in 1990. But there are also so many different things that 
are, are not quite certifiably organic that might be a much better way of recycling wastewater, reusing nutrients on the farm, uh, slightly modifying naturally occurring components uh, that make a, an ecological system that's totally sustainable, not just something that qualifies for an organic label. So we encourage you to meet your local farmers, meet your local chefs. Uh, Jonathan's done a great job here at Tolliver House of, of using local produce, finding out what's available from week to week, and designing his menu around that. So we encourage you to support those restaurants and those farmers. So we're a sustainable business, which means we sustain our local economy, the agriculture, um, the farming community, and also ourselves. So what that means is we only use local produce for everything that we can. Not only do we use local produce for everything that we can, but we ask each farmer, each sole producer, what they need to get for their product in order to stay afloat and to stay in business. So we pay a well above average um, per gallon of milk what our dairy farmer gets from his co-op. We pay what our herb supplier deserves to get paid for her things and so on and so forth. There's something that we're doing that um, hasn't been done in a long time, which is we're only sourcing locally, which means we don't buy citrus. People haven't been used to cooking or baking without citrus in 50 years or beyond. So we're developing new techniques to teach people, well, here's a vegetable or fruit you can use to replace citrus or to replace sugar if you want to use honey. And so in the citrus case, we use rhubarb juice, which my fiance cleverly came up with. Um, and we juice four pounds of rhubarb, get a quart of juice out of that, and that per ounce replaces lemon juice. So we're teaching people how to utilize their local produce in a way that they never knew before. We're actually a green business, which is something we don't get to say very often. It goes hand in hand with what we do locally no matter what, but we actually um, we only use biodegradable packaging, which means that all of our packaging is made out of corn. The foam that we ship our ice cream in is made out of corn. Everything biodegrades and it's healthy for the environment on all fronts. So we're trying to educate people not only on using local foods, but also on being environmentally friendly as well. Well, we're, we're teaching people that it is possible to make ice cream with four simple ingredients, cream, milk, sugar, eggs. Um, up until now, um, people have been using really awful things in their ice creams like chemicals, emulsifiers, stabilizers, and preservatives. So the biggest contribution we're making is showing people that yes, it's possible to make ice cream with the ingredients that you can find in your own backyard or your neighbor's backyard. It's a uh, competitive market. There's a lot of huge companies that make the product that we make. There's a lot of huge companies that are growing and you know raising food and around. So it's a, a very real competition. So buy fresh, buy local is a way to um, stand out to a, a market that we really should be out. As far as uh, you know, personal story, I, was, I just wanted to work uh, in the country and do something and the you know as I looked into the whiskey business it was a very uh, cohesive uh, environmentally clean package where what we do is our, you know we buy our barley you know we make a single malt we buy our barley from a farmer uh, we add value we malt our own barley we're the only distillery in North America that malts our own barley um, we don't use peat like they do with some scotch whiskeys uh, but we use apple wood and cherry wood and we're the only people in the world to do that so we're distinct we stand out we also age with apple wood and oak wood chips and uh, that's a unique thing in the spirits uh, industry but we're we're buying from a farmer that's growing our grain and our waste product goes to uh, feed cattle beef cattle so a guy you know with an apple orchard and beef cattle on the side comes and picks up our waste whenever we tell them it's a good thing we take all the starch from the grain we leave all the protein for the cows so, you know some people who use cell phones that's their primary phone we don't have that because we don't have reception but um, where the cows go they have uh, a cell tower right near their field and they somehow hooked in so they actually call me up the cows when we're too slow on production and they're like hey man we need some more mash 
And so, the, you know, the cows are really jonesing for the mash. So drink more whiskey so that the cows can be happy. In our store in Unionville, what makes us special is that we are able to bring in local products from other local farmers and we market in the network of our community and we make things easily accessible and also give people knowledge about what's in our community which is great so with our cheese we'll sell some ground beef or a nice bottle of wine or some nice chocolates for dessert and that is really important to um, not only market yourself, but market the people around you and to network our products together. The Buy Fresh, Buy Local program is very unique and important in our community. First of all, it brings together um, the mom and pop stores to unique individuals that are looking for particular things. And um, it keeps the community connected and networked to let people know exactly what's out there, what's at their back door. And um, it's just a great program. People should support Buy Fresh, Buy Local program just for the fact that it helps preserve our family farms, our land, and, and our community, and a way of life that is being lost in the society today. Doesn't matter whether it's organic or what the title is, but just see the farm, see how the animals are treated, see what's sprayed on the crops. If you smell that farm two miles away, then you know you're at the wrong place. All the meat, poultry on our dinner menu comes from the Orange County area. Produce is um, a little more difficult. Um, you always need carrots, onions, and celery year-round, and it's not grown year-round yet. It's, it's your mirepoix vegetables, the base of what everything you do. So I have mixed feelings about that. I get this beautiful asparagus for two months, and then I have to switch to some sort of commercial vegetable for about six weeks until the beans come into um, season. So it's, you know, I'm not totally happy about that, but I don't live in California. And um, Mike Clark of um, Planet Earth Diversified has been a godsend for me because he, he has spinach almost year-round and tomatoes and garnishes and... Um, He's been a treat to work with. That's, that helps a lot. If you'd like more information on the Buy Fresh, Buy Local campaign and upcoming Meet the Farmer dinners in your area, you can visit our website at www.buylocalvirginia.org. As you can see, there's a lot to explore about this exciting concept, food from the farm to the plate and alternative agriculture here in Central Virginia. So join us next week as we follow some produce directly from the farm to a local restaurant and show how it ends up on your plate. In future episodes, we will show you how food can be grown throughout the winter here in Central Virginia. For more information about Meet the Farmer TV, visit our website, meetthefarmer.com. Meet the Farmer TV has been made possible by the generous support of Planet Earth Diversified. Makia Video Productions and Frank Melly Productions With additional support from Flavor Magazine, serving the Piedmont's local food and wine culture.